Hello, I'm Glenn Nevel, and today I will show you how to specify a concurrent data structure and a weak memory. Nowadays, concurrency is everywhere, and all real-world shared memories have some counterintuitive behavior. So, not only do we want to verify concurrent data structures, but we want to verify them against an actual model of memory, what we call a weak memory model. Our paper's contribution is a specification and a proof of a particular fine-grained implementation of a concurrent queue in a weak memory model, which is that of multicore common. In this talk, we won't cover the proof, not the implementation, but we'll see how to write a usable spec for it. Concurrency poses a number of challenges. We want to specify a data structure such that we allow sharing it between threads, so one challenge is with shared ownership, and as we'll see, Something this involves some form of atomicity. The operations of a concurrent data structure uh, must behave as if they were atomic, and it's something we must specify somehow. Another challenge is with weak memory. With weak memory, you need to be explicit about how your threads synchronize. So spec must expose useful synchronizations and and often, uh, fine-grained implementations offer less synchronizations than a log-based one. We will tackle these challenges by using Cosmo, which is our concurrent program logic for multicore kernel. Just to get familiar with notations, let's start with a non-concurrent specification. We have three operations, make and queue and dequeue. We specify them using, ho using hot triples. A triple is made of a preconditioned formula, a program fragment on a post condition formula. We have a representation predicate is Q, which asserts that Q is a memory location storing a well formed Q data structure whose items are in order, the values in the given list. We are in separation logic, so conjunction is denoted with an asterisk, and the assertion is Q is not duplicable. Rather, it asserts the unique ownership of the Q. Now let's enter concurrency. For now, let's assume sequential consistency, that is, a program always behaves as some interleaving of its threads. We want to specify a queue which can be used concurrently. Can we simply keep the spec that we just saw? Uh, well, this spec is still valid, but to use it, a thread needs the unique ownership of the queue, so that effectively prevents concurrent uses. And it makes sense, because there is no reason to believe that the data structure is thread-safe, unless we specify it. So let's consider a queue that is thread-safe. To see how uh, to reflect thread safety in the spec, uh, let's adopt for a moment the, the point of view of the user. As a user of, the, of a concurrent data structure, we, we want to share its ownership among threads. And in a concurrent separation logic, such as Iris, we can do it by putting it in an invariant. An invariant is an assertion which holds at all times, and in which we can put whatever resource we want. Then it is the invariant itself which owns the resource, and any thread can access it. To access it, we open the invariant around the program fragment E. That is, we uh, before running E, we obtain the contents of the invariant, and afterwards we return it. Now the issue. For soundness in the face of concurrency, we, we can only open an invariant for at most one step of execution. This is a problem because the number of steps is a low-level implementation detail and as a user, we have no idea whether the operation is complete in one step and it's unlikely. So the user cannot use a queue-sharing invariant around the specs that we have written earlier. But doing so will be reasonable because a concurrent queue has to be implemented in such a way that its operation look uh, atomic to the user. For this, Iris provides us a notion of logically atomic triples, which we will denote with angle brackets instead of curly brackets. It's something we can define in the logic, I won't show how, but the key point is that we have this couple of properties. First, a logically atomic triple entails the regular triple. Second, we can open inference around it freely. This is a way of stating that E is logically atomic, and by that, we mean more formally than 
there is a step in the execution of E such that E behaves as if everything happened during that step. It is this step which satisfies the whole triple with P and Q, so P and Q need not hold at the start and end of E, but only just before and just after the atomic step. Because of this, we need a binder to be able to name things which we only know during the atom step, when we actually open the environment. So here, X is bound in both P and Q. Fine. With logical atomicity, let's transcend operator spec for concurrent uses. The spec of make does not change because we do not need it. We do not need it to be atomic. For NQ and DQ, we we do the following changes. We replace the regular triples with logical atomic triples. We bind the Q state explicitly in the triples. And that's it. So we now have a usable spec for a concurrent queue, but that was under sequential consistency. Sequential consistency is an unrealistic assumption in the modern world, so we have to embrace weaker models of memory. A one-on-one -on -one is that of C11, and here we are interested in that of multicore family. A way of describing such models is by saying that each thread has its own view of the shared state. For multicore camel, this has been made formal by people at Cambridge on the references on the slide. And based on this, we have the Cosmo, a program logic for multicore camel. A few words about Cosmo. Cosmo is based on Iris, hence we inherit all of its features, the version logic, and so on. Its distinctive trait is that, in general, assertions are subjective, we are reasoning under an implicit ambient view, uh, which represents the current view of the current thread, and assertion, assertions may depend on it. For instance, x points to 42, it's, it, it is subjective. Maybe we see that x is storing the value 42 because we have written it, but our write has not been propagated to other threads yet, and they still see another value for x. With that said, a limitation with subjective assertions is that invariants are still available to all threads. So the assertions that they store cannot depend on the views of a specific thread of a specific thread, they are restricted to objective assertions. Back to our queue, recall that we want to share the queue in an invariant, so its representation predicate must be objective. And we make this objectivity requirement a part of the specs. Now, do we need any other modification to the previous spec? It is still usable in limited cases, but for the general case, it lacks thread synchronization. Let's consider an example. Thread A writes to some memory region, but then enqueues a pointer to that region. Thread B dequeues the pointer. Now thread B expects to read the memory region in the state in which A has left it. But remember that we are in weak memory, so it's not because A knows it has written 3 to x bracket 1 that B knows it too. So we want to we want the Q to guarantee that when dequeuing, B learns about all rights known by A, which is a typical release acquire pattern. This is a side effect that we need, so it must be specified. From the logical perspective, the user wants to transfer points to assertions from A to B, but as I say, points to assertions are subjective, so the user cannot simply put them in inferno, and we need something more. So it's time for me to explain how views and synchronization work in Cosmo. We have an abstract notion of views. It comes equipped with an inclusion relation. The larger, the more up-to-date. And to manipulate views, we have new kinds of assertions in the logic. First, upper OV means that the ambient view contains V. So this is the, 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 it's the archetypical subjective assertion. And second, P at V, where P is any assertion, means P with this, with the ambient view fixed to V. P at V is objective, even if P is subjective. This assertion satisfies several rules, in particular 
this one, any assertion P can be decomposed into an assertion upper OV and an assertion P at V for some V OV and conversely. That's how we can transfer P between threads. We isolate all of its subjective knowledge into a component upper OV so that what's left is an objective assertion P at V, which we can share in an invariant. So to achieve a transfer of P, we just have to transfer view assertions, and this has a runtime meaning. This is thread synchronization. Back to our queue again, we want to say that for each item, there is a synchronization that is a view transfer from, from the enqueuer to the dequeuer. The idea is to pretend that the queue stores the views being transferred, so, so there is no one view for each item, and the representation predicate now looks like this. If we, if we recall the previous spec, it is now augmented with views, and the view transfer happens like that. The enqueuer pushes its current view into the queue alongside the enqueued item. So in the pre, we use an assertion upper OV for capturing the current view, or, or in fact, any portion of it as chosen by the user of the spec. And conversely, the dequeuer pulls the view that comes with the item. So it gets that same upper OV, which means that now its current view includes V. So it's really, uh, really the acquire pattern. I'd like to draw your attention to something. You may wonder how this approach to specification compares with refinement. In a typical refinement based spec, you will say something like, this queue can be used everywhere we can use a knife queue protected by a lock. But in weak memory, this spec has a shortcoming. The lock induces synchronizations between all pairs of operations, even though many lock-free queues do not grant them, because precisely we try to reduce the necessary synchronizations. By contrast, our spec is weaker, for instance, it does not guarantee any dequeuer to enqueuer synchronization, so we can specify more implementations. To recap, I've shown several tools for reasoning about concurrent programs. Invariants are well known already. To use invariants to have full power, we need to pay attention to atomicity in specs, and for that, we have logical atomic triples. What's new is that now we want to support weak memory, and for that, we have views. My claim is that the combination of all of these tools works, Logical atomicity is compatible with weak memory, and it's expressive enough for specifying and proving fine-grained concurrent programs, while at the same time remaining quite natural to use. I've only talked about specification, but there is more in the paper. We have a proof for non-trivial log-free queue, and this proof demonstrates the benefit of our approach, because this implementation has less synchronizations than a log-based queue, so it's not a refinement. And oh, um, by the way, uh, at the time we were working on that proof, all the people were working on the refinement proof of a very similar data structure under sequential consistency, so you can have a look at the paper too. We also have a proof of a simple client application which demonstrates that our spec is usable. And all of this takes place in areas of a powerful separation logic framework, and last but not least, by the virtue of cock, everything is machine-checked. Thank you for your attention.